It's been a long time coming that I require another NAS or network attached storage on my network. Currently, I'm using an Apple NAS and yes, it's been a long time since Apple have been out of the storage game and this server is reaching its capacity. There are several NAS boxes on the market that you can purchase and set up very easily, but they can be expensive. Today, I'll show you how to create your own budget-friendly NAS just using a Raspberry Pi, an external SSD, and an open source software called Open Media Vault. To get started, you'll require a Raspberry Pi. I'm using the Raspberry Pi 4, which is an 8GB model. I recommend the 4GB or 8GB models, so you can use the Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 5, whichever you have in your inventory. Uh, a little micro SD card, well, micro SD card to install the OS and Open Media Vault and you'll require an external hard drive so I recommend SSDs because that is faster so I'm currently using the WD Black SSD card which I got on offer from Amazon the other item that you also might require is like a micro SD card USB reader so that you can flash the OS of the Raspberry Pi onto it and to make things look neat and tidy you can always get a nice case for your Raspberry Pi and in my case I'm using just a normal basic Raspberry Pi phone case it's just a it's not like a NAS silver case and I've got a little case for my SSD card too to install the Raspberry Pi OS, you will need to have the Pi Imager software in place. So I currently have it installed. It's called the Raspberry Pi Imager. So go to your browser. Let's download that. So it's on the official Raspberry Pi website. Depending on your OS, you can download for your Windows, Ubuntu, Debian, Mac OS. Okay, so I've already got it installed. The next item is to plug in your micro SD card for the operating system. I'm just gonna choose the light version, so it would be under Raspberry Pi OS other 64 bit. That's an OS4. Oh yeah, Raspberry Pi OS light 64 bit. And for my storage just the one which I mounted just now. Make sure to choose the right storage, otherwise you'll be wiping out another device that you don't want to. Um, so would you like to apply OS customization settings? And for this, yes, I would like to do so. The items that I'm changing over here is the host name. I've kept it as NAS hyphen, NAS hyphen pi. I've set the username as Alston B. The password, I've kept it as password for now. Uh, uncheck the wireless LAN. You can always enable this if you want to run it using Wi-Fi. But in my case, I will be connecting it directly to my switch via an Ethernet cable. So I will be unchecking this. Set local time and enable SSH because you want to enable, you want to log in using SSH and you want to plug in a keyboard and a monitor to set up your Raspberry Pi device. So enable that uh, and the rest all can be left as default. Save that and this will take some time to write onto the micro SD card. Shouldn't take that long. Once you get this message, write successful, you can safely remove the SD card from the reader. I'm just going to do that now. And once that's done, pop it into your Raspberry Pi. Okay. And now I'm going to take this and my external SSD card and I'll connect it to my network and we'll carry on from there. The Raspberry Pi is connected to my network switch downstairs and it has also got the external hard drive connected to it. What about the IP address? Because we did not set up a static IP address while we were doing the Raspberry Pi configuration. So in my case, I have OpenSense Firewall, which I can see the DHCP4 leases, and you need to check with your network switch if you can go into the browser and have a look at the IP addresses which are allocated for new devices. So go down to services, DHCP4, leases, and select the interface as VLAN 10. So as you can see in my VLAN 10, I've got my Raspberry Pi NAS 
and it has got the IP address of 10.1.10.110. So a lot of ones and zeros. Okay, so now you wanna, if you're on a Windows machine, you, you wanna use PuTTY to log in into your Linux box. But since I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna use Terminal. And I will set SSH. And I will SSH using Alston B at 10.1.10.110. Yes, password is password for this demonstration, which will be changed at a later stage. Let's start that. Okay, and we are in. With any new installation of the OS, you should always update and pretty much upgrade the software. So what we're gonna do is use this command, sudo apt update, ampersand, ampersand, sudo apt upgrade, hyphen y so this will take some time and depending how old the os was it will take a lot, lot of time okay after a couple of minutes this installation is complete when i say installation i mean the updates are upgraded the next step is to install open media world and this is done with a single command which i'm just going to paste in right now I will also place this command down in the description box, so don't worry about um, pausing this video and typing this out. Just copy and paste, just like how I do. Once the Open Media World installation is completed, you will get logged out from your terminal session. So let's try to log back in. And you get this error and it's very odd because you haven't changed your password and even though your password is correct, yep, you'll still get a permission denied, please try again and it'll just uh, kick you back out. So the reason behind this is because Open Media Vault will actually change your user rights and will actually remove your, well, in my case, Alston B account from the SSH group. And if we log into our browser, so this is the IP address for our Raspberry Pi. So that is 110. Yeah, you can see that Open Media Vault is actually running and the username, the default username and password is admin and Open Media Vault. Hackers always like when users use their default username and password. So first thing what we should do is change that password. Save it. And the next item is to go to users. Go to users again, and you can see this is the user that we have created for our Raspberry Pi 4. Edit that, and in groups, you can see that it is actually unchecked for SSH, so check that and save it. You may have to click on apply, but sometimes it just works. So let's go to our terminal. Try that again. And there you go. So I'm able to now SSH into my Raspberry Pi 4. So that solves that issue. It is just a very weird, strange bug, I guess. Now let's look into our Open Media World dashboard. So if you would like to change all these widgets, you can go down to the icon, the admin icon top right corner and go to dashboards. I've just select all of them. It was like, why not, right? <laughs> um, so you can see the CPU, you can see the load average, utilization, memory, and so on. You can see also updates available. Under systems, you have some workbench items, you have date and time notifications, um, some help monitoring. There's also plugins, there's a lot of things you can actually do. Networks, general networks interfaces there's also a firewall option which you can add rules 
Um, but what we really need is to actually set up our external SSD. So what we're going to do is go to storage, go to disks, and we can see that we have our external SSD visible. And the first thing that we need to do is actually wipe it so that it is getting a clean file system. So what we're going to do is click on the wipe and confirm the wipe. Let's do a quick one. And that was pretty quick. So that's all redone. The next item is again in storage file system and we will create and mount a file system. ext4 is my choice and I'm going to select device. Let's save that. This will take some time so give it a couple of minutes. Okay end of line that means the process has been completed. Let's close this. The next step from here is to on the file systems page we already created and mount a system so i actually skipped the mounting bit so let's mount an existing file system select the file system that we created let's give it a warning threshold of 85 percent let's click on save and there you go so now we can see our file system already in place next step is to actually create the shared folder so click on shared folder click on create I'm going to call it as my NAS and for the file system we're just going to select the one we just created um, come on okay cancel okay file system it's there it's running shared folder create I'm unable to select the file system, so let me apply these changes because it is, I think, bugging something out. So let me just apply this. Okay, so the changes have been applied. Let's try creating the shared folder again. Create, and now you can see the file system and I can select it. So let's name it to my NAS relative pod. It's automatically given that. And yeah, administrators read and write, just leave that as default. Save that. The next part is to give our users permissions to access this MyNAS folder. So we're gonna do permissions. Alston B, read and write, save it. And in access control as well, we will give Alston B read and write, save it. And the next item and the last item I think in this process is to actually enable NFS or SMB. So what this is basically, it is the way for workstations to actually connect to this um, network storage. So NFS is used for Linux and Mac devices so I will be enabling this but I also have Windows workstation on my network and I'll have to enable SMB for that so to do this you'll have to go to NFS go to settings enable it click on save and then we also need to go down to shares create and select the folder that we have created and we also want to share and it is also asking which clients that will be able to access this. So I'm just going to put the whole network of my VLAN 10. Slash 24, the permissions, read and write. Click on save. So, so that is NFS setup. Let's, let's do SMB now. Settings, once again, click on enable. Click on save and once that's done again go to shares click on create oh i think i could have just done it on the previous screen 
Um, in shared folder, select the minus folder and click on save. I think we have done all the configurations on Open Media Vault. And lastly, let's click on apply to make the configuration changes. So now let's try to access my my NAS folder, which is hosted on our Raspberry Pi 4. So to do this on the MacBooks, you'll have to go to find the window to locations and network. So as you can see, this is my Apple time capsule, my previous NAS storage, or also my current one, which will be replaced soon by this one. And if you double click it, connect as Okay, so there you go. So I can see my mass, my NAS folder. Let's try to copy some files into it. So I would like to actually back up some really important photos. I do have some folders that I need to back up. So I'm, I was currently backing them up on this external drive. So now I can have multiple copies of them. Okay, so now I can just create a new folder, let's call it Japan because I would like to save all my Japan pictures. And let's copy these three folders into that. Go on. Let's see how long this takes. It's 259 GB. It's calculating. Mm, okay. Estimating time remaining. Yeah, it's going to take about 14 hours. Okay. Um, but yeah, see, so that's. So while that's working, oh, it's dropped down to 13 hours now. That's how you create a NAS using your Raspberry Pi 4 or 5 and using Open Media Vault. Quick note here, since we are using a single external SSD, there's no RAID setup in this build. That means you don't get redundancy. If the drive fails, your data is pretty much gone. So make sure you have regular backups, like I'm already having two SSDs in play and make sure that your files are elsewhere which are especially very important this is meant to be a simple low-cost nas for home use not an enterprise level solution if you found anything remotely useful in this video please hit the like button and subscribe for more tech videos and let me know down in the comments what approach you are taking with your nas build thanks for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one